So I'm currently working on a larger video project, but unfortunately due to the current world issues and how they affect shipping times, I've had to slow that project down for the moment. So instead I switched gears and decided to tackle something I've tried in the past, but with not so great results. The Spectraflame Rainbow Car. I also wanted to address an issue that several people brought up in my last video as far as the paint being dull, so I'll get to that later. Now since most of the processes I am doing with this video are covered in previous videos, I'll move through most of them rather quickly just to get to the good stuff. I chose to go with a Volkswagen Beetle here as it seems like a good choice for this type of paint job. Also I believe it's one of the few metal body metal based cars that came out in the main line in recent years. So I bought a bunch of them, though not enough to actually fill a chessboard as they are intended. Anyway, the first thing I'll need to do is remove the paint, and I do this with some aircraft paint remover. Next I'll sandblast the car, just as I did in my previous video. I recommend removing the paint before sandblasting, as sandblasting the car to remove the paint can cause you to unintentionally sandblast away features while trying to remove all the paint. Next, I'll go over the car with a soft steel brush to smooth everything out, and then I'll use a brass brush to polish the car. Next, I'll degrease the body and then plate the surface in zinc. I'll plate it three times, polishing it with a brass brush after each plating cycle. After all this, I should end up with a polished body reminiscent of the original Spectraflame cars. Now comes the fun part, painting. The real trick to doing this with Spectraflame is to use the transparent nature of the paint to produce some of the colors when convenient, but also to take care that you don't unintentionally create colors where they shouldn't be. I'm going to go with a six color rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. Some other colors like teal will sneak in, again due to color mixing, but these six colors will be the main colors I'm going for. I'll first start with yellow and create a yellow band of color across the hood of the car going to the middle of the roof. After I achieve this, I'll let the car set for about 10 minutes before moving to my next color, red. When painting red, I'll start from the front of the car and move partway up the hood, keeping an eye out for orange. Of course, red and yellow make orange, so if I'm careful, I can create this color band without having to actually paint orange on the car. Next will be green. Here things can get a bit difficult. Green and yellow make blue, so I need to add an extra few coats of green to overpower the blue created by mixing the two colors. But I also have to be careful not to create a hard line of green. I want all the colors to softly blend into each other, something I failed at at previous attempts. The next color will be blue, and here I'll paint it just past the green. By the way, I'm always painting the colors in the same direction, front to back. This limits overspray from contaminating the other colors. After blue, I'll finish with purple on the rear of the car. Now you might notice that the paint doesn't have a consistent gloss to it. This is because the overspray of Spectraflame creates a matte surface. You can see this in the orange color, for example. I'll discuss this further later, but this is why the paint looks dull in my last video. To get all the colors to match up, I'll wait a day for them to cure and then go over the entire car with clear Spectraflame. This will give all the colors a uniform gloss. After a few days of curing, I can now handle the car and you can see how the paint turned out. I can see a little bit of orange peel, so to remove that, I will polish the clear coat with some polishing compound and a buffing wheel. Here you can see the final result. So now all that's left to do is to take care of a wheel swap. I really don't like the original wheels on this car, so I've decided to change them out with something that looks more appropriate. The donor car I chose to go with is this Punisher van, both because I think the wheels will look cool on the Beetle and because I plan to take it apart to steal all the guns off of it for a future Mad Max project. Once I have all the parts, I can go about putting the car back together. So besides trying my hand at this type of paint job, I also wanted to address some of the comments in the previous video. A lot of people were honest and stated that while they liked the original look I can get from sandblasting, they still prefer the mirrored look, even if it looks nothing like the original. And to that, all I can say is, yeah, it's impossible to beat that look. That is why almost all the high-end cars from the Redline Club are mirrored polish. Nothing pops like a candy-colored mirror-plated car. So I totally get why people like that look. For others, they mentioned the paint being dull, as in not glossy. 
Again, that's me trying to match paint from 50 or so years ago. Most vintage cars today, even in mint condition, do not shine like they did back in the day. My goal is to try and match what mint cars look like today. As such, I was not going for a glossy paint job. Hopefully here though, you can see that a glossy look can still be achieved with the sandblasting, if that's what you're going for. Last, some people brought up the paint looking dull due to the surface of the metal. Here, there's not much I can do about that. Most people are not telling me what they're comparing the car against. And in the video, I compared the car to an original mint red line. From my perspective, they match up really well, though I admit my purple was not as deep. As far as this car is concerned, a mirrored surface would be a major improvement. The colors are bright, but the light bouncing off the surface of the metal is pretty diffuse, and as such, the paint doesn't pop like it would if I'd given it a mirrored shine. But that's not what this video was about, and at the end of the day, I enjoy experimenting with these things and taking you along for the ride. Speaking of that, I have several videos in the works. I'll be trying to get them out in the next two weeks as I know a lot of you are stuck at home at the moment. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.